The ACLU has issued an apology for editing a quote from the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The well-known statement from RBG defending access to abortion was shared on Twitter last week. The original language is, the decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life, to her well-being and dignity. It is, it is a decision she must make for herself. When the government controls that decision for her, she is being treated as less than a full adult human responsible for her own choices. But that quote was changed to be gender neutral. Nice. The ACLU's executive director called the change, quote, a mistake among the digital team, that's BS, saying changing quotes is not something they do. Senior editor at Reason, Robbie Suave, criticized the flub, saying, quote, it would be preferable for a free speech and civil liberties organization to be a bit more aghast at the idea of scrubbing gender-specific language from famous quotations. He joins us now to expand on this. Long time no see, Robbie. How's it going? <laughs> Great. Thanks for having me back. So of quickly. course. Of course. So I think this is... Is, this is tantamount to this is the erasure of women that is the sort of logical conclusion of progressive feminism, the sort of conception of feminism that has to be gender neutral. Um, Robbie, my question to you is, as you point out, a civil liberties organization should be aghast. They should be repulsed by something like this. Yeah. But instead, um, even in the apology, the I, one of the ACLU representatives said, we actually wish that if our RBG were alive today, we think we would hope that she would want to use gender inclusive language. So I think this isn't just like a Twitter squabble. This is actually, there's a serious consequence here that one of the major institutions of American society that was built up to defend a pillar of our system, which is free expression, free speech and free expression, doesn't seem to support that anymore. What is the hard consequence of the sort of abstract idea of um, you know, gender neutrality? Is, is there one and is this representative of it? Right, that comment by the executive director was in some ways more offensive than right. the underlying issue because you could have chalked up the changing of the comment in the tweet to you know the social media person who's probably this young militantly woke person who unfortunately and and for 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 great ill does not quite understand the the uh, organization's mission. But this is the executive director saying that a liberal progressive icon, an icon of of women's rights. Should that well, you know, she she's only she's been she's been dead a year, and she's already being <laughs> deemed problematic for things she said, you know, in, in recent memory. Um, I, I think even if you are the most like like mil, like totally pro everything the left thinks about uh, trans issues, even if you're on board with all of it, you should be a you should be very you should be concerned about this level of changing language and and i mean there's something soviet about this about like erasing people from pictures uh that i that just should not sit right with anyone wait till they find out yeah. what uh, ruth bader ginsburg thought about roe right. <laughs> well and you know at the end of her career she was really basking in social media adulation and, and, I, and I think it, it it, it backfired in a significant way for, for Democrats to have created that notorious R, RBG uh, aura because she probably stayed, stayed as a justice yeah. longer because uh, she was enjoying writing those fiery dissents. I dissent being this, becoming this catchphrase, which is, is such a symbol of, of left-wing powerlessness that you're celebrating your, your losses. Like try, try the, you know, I affirm, I win. Like that, that would be a that would be the sign of a judicial movement that that is that is waxing rather than than waning. But I do think. But it's also there's like the cultural layer and the economic layer. So losing on the economic layer, but then also getting like a Burgerfell right. under Urban G. Sure, but so I but I I do think that because of her relationship with uh, with social media in particular, that there's a chance that that the executive director is right. That if she, that if she mm. were still alive, that she would be using language like that, and, and might regret like some of the you, pre previous language. In that, a few, uh, you, you know, in a few, um, uh, in an interview she gave, I believe, to the Atlantic within the last few years um, on the Title IX and the the campus sexual misconduct right. adjudication that I have written about and talked about on, on Rising a lot, and I know you have as well, Emily. 
um, she actually said she was she said that she thought some of those procedures were actually unfair to accused persons and and were you know were not comporting with basic due process. Um, so wait wait till uh, wait till the new ACLU gets a hold of gets a hold of that recalls that she gave that uh, that interview. She'll be uh, she'll be the RBG wing of the of the uh, museum will be will be shut down or whatever it is. <laughs> I, so I was actually surprised that there was sufficient backlash to the point where the ACLU had to address this in the New York Times and talking to Michelle Goldberg. Robbie, do you think that signals um, as somebody you've literally written a book about some of this, especially as it was sort of birthed on campuses? Do you think this this, this signals that there has been sort of a victory in the culture war, war as it pertains at least to free speech and free expression, that the momentum is on the side of returning to a culture of free speech and free expression if the ACLU, which does seem to expect such a measure of um, you know, respect and the benefit of the doubt from the, the very liberal uh, corporate media, felt the need to address this? Uh, I think this is a, a minor victory. I was Michelle Goldberg, the New York Times columnist, who uh, has not been the biggest, <laughs> I think, person on our side in this struggle. Uh, that she was even very perturbed by this. Uh, her column was really good. You know, she was. She said that you know maybe RBG chose this language for a reason because she, uh, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg viewed women as the not people, women. Pri- Predominantly, and you know, you can be completely in support of trans people. You can say, you know, there are tiny exceptions where where a a, a tra- you know a trans uh, uh, man is is would be involved in a pregnancy. But ninety nine point nine percent of the people affected by reproductive issues are women, and it it is not offensive. It is not hurtful to say that, and 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 no no one should. We really have to hold the hold the line on that. That is not an offensive statement. That's not meant to delegitimize or marginalize anyone. Right. The, the analysis that abortion policy is, is tied in with upholding the patriarchy is drained of its energy you know, if, 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 you, if you make it gender neutral. So yeah. I think and Michelle's making a really, really interesting point there. I actually do think that th- this was that th- somebody in the social media department was blindsided by this. Because there is a generational thing going on. I think the reason <laughs> they backed off is because uh, a lot of uh, older women in, in particular, you know, longtime feminists, uh, do not like to see women erased from the movement that they spent their, their life building. And a lot of uh, older, wealthier women are you know, significant funders of the, of the ACLU, and there's no doubt that the executive director heard from a lot of those people and, and from people like, like Michelle Goldberg who are saying, look, you, you, you cannot erase women from this analysis. On the other hand, the, the younger generation, I don't think remotely saw anything controversial about that tweet. They put that out and said, well, of course this is, it would be, it would be offensive and bigoted to put up anything other oh, yeah. than, than a redacted tweet here. And so in that sense, I, I, do, I do bet that in, in this institution, the social media team has the authority to post these things and, and then it spiraled. And this is a moment where that generation uh, is talking to someone outside of their class, class outside the classroom, yep. you know, out, outside of their social centers, like, oh, not everyone agrees with this. But then, I, yeah. and, and go ahead, Robbie, go ahead. I, I, I have some sources inside the ACLU, and, and they tell me that, yeah, this is a problem with the new, much younger, uh, much more, you know, woke, not to always use that term derisively, but people who came aboard, who came to the organization, who've come out of the new liberal uh, elite campus mindset of, of, of increasing hostility to free speech, they see the organization as essentially just an anti-Trump organization. We should, you know, sue against Trumpist principles. They don't want it to be as much of like the, well, why would, you know, why would we defend Nazis? They don't, they don't get that. That's not the leadership of the ACLU. That's not its history. That's that's not you know the the that the direction it's it's constantly consciously choosing. But some of the people who work there, the young people, that's what they want. So this is the kind of civil war going on uh, beneath the surface. If that's what you want, the ACLU is not the place of employment for you. But if you can shape it to be the place of employment for you, then maybe it is. And that's where we get into the just sort of race against the clock phenomenon as people who are like the Michelle Goldbergs are replaced by the younger people who are like whoever put this on social media. That's, you know, we'll see who wins. It's a tug of war. Robbie, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Next on Rising, senior correspondent at Insider, Matt Schwartz, details the latest corruption scandal surrounding Hunter Biden. We'll be right back. <laughs> 